What is up, Ravens fans? We are so excited to be back with you on One on One at the Castle. Today, I am joined by Patrick Ricard, who needs no introduction. I know you all know and love him. I think the funniest thing to me during training camp this year was how obsessed people are with you on TikTok. Did you ever expect that? No, and I like don't really know until like you tell me like right now. It's crazy. We, I think I posted a video of you literally just running out to the practice field. A million views on TikTok. They just they love wow. you. Wow, that's that's you. crazy. Thank you guys. Appreciate. <laughs> I, that means I, I probably should make my own TikTok. You probably should. And start doing like some random stuff. <laughs> yeah, you'll be Trace McSorley 2.0 all right. over TikTok. Pat is gonna be taking your questions, so make sure you comment them, and we will get them to him today. Um, also, speaking of social media, did you ever find the hedgehog? You're po- is it a hedgehog you're posting about in your Instagram story, stealing Amazon packages? Yeah. Oh, cool. um, okay, so I thought it was a groundhog, and then people were saying it's a groundhog. No, it's a woodchuck. People were saying like beaver, <laughs> and I'm like, it's definitely not a beaver. And then I guess a woodhog, I mean, a groundhog and a woodchuck are like the same thing. Okay. So that's what it is. I'm calling it a groundhog, groundhog. and it lives under my front stairs in my front of front door of my house and it ate all of my mom's brand new mom's my, my wife got and then recorded the first video and then I was like you know interacting on, on Instagram and then I go back outside to like see it again and this thing has an Amazon package in its mouth and I'm like no way like this thing's it's got to go and I wonder how many packages it like took under the stairs so probably a couple things missing out there so how, how what do you do now you just it's his territory you just gotta let it go I'm kind of ignoring it until I, I see it again a couple more times, and if I do, then I'll probably have someone uh, relocate it, just you know, remove it. I don't want to. I don't want to kill it. I don't, don't want to kill animals. Yeah. So, um, but Not yeah, it's, it's got to go. Not yeah. the mums. Can't no. you can't mess up the mums. Um, another one of my favorite clips this season has been you and Judon, our old pal Matthew Judon at the Patriots, going back and forth in that Patriots game. A referee told you how good your block was. Has that ever happened to you before? I don't think that's something that happens that often. Obviously, I'm not down there. I don't know, but. Yeah, no, that was, uh, that was the first <laughs> time. And it was like, kind of took me by surprise. I was like, you know, if a ref says that to you, that means that it was a really good block because like, I feel like they can't like say good things to players because it's sure. kind of like an unbiased thing. So it was cool for him to do that. And how fun was it for you to go against a guy who you've obviously battled a lot in practice here? Now he's on the other side, but he's someone that's still like well liked around here. Yeah, you know, uh, obviously been here my whole career, so like I have a lot of respect for our guys here. And whenever a defensive player goes to a different team, I always get excited to play them because I'm thinking like, you know, how would I do against them in a real game? Mm-hmm. You know, I practice against you all the time, so uh, to be able to have the chance, opportunity, it was a lot of fun. And you know, we're we're good friends, so. There was a lot of, you know, just talking back and forth, as you saw. Um, <laughs> but I uh, love Matt, so. He, and he loves he loves a trash dog, so yeah. that's always fun. And I know that game was special for you. You're from that area up in New England. So what was it like for you to be able to have all your, like, hometown friends and family at that game, obviously cheering for the Ravens, but. Yeah. Um, you know, born an hour from Foxborough, Patriots fans, all Boston sports growing up. Um, so to finally play there with fans, you know, we played there in 2020, but COVID and, the monsoon and us losing it just like was not that great of experience so to actually play there I played well team played great have you know friends and family different people in the community go there uh definitely meant a lot you know it's almost like a dream game for me to finally be able to do that and you know uh and it was just a great day overall it's awesome all right we're gonna take some fan questions here this one is coming to us from Facebook Jay Crescent wants to know who your favorite teammate off the field and on is you know, it's spot. hard because, like, I've had so many good friends here who's either got, you know, traded, released, retired. Right now, I'm really close to a lot of the offensive linemen. Um, and it's also my wife is, is friends with, you know, some of the wives on the team. So it's probably, you know, Kevin Zeitler, Ben Powers. Uh, I'm getting really close with Tyler Linderbaum. He's a great guy. And obviously the tight ends, too. I mean, I'm with them all, all the time. You mentioned Tyler Linderbaum, and obviously he comes in as a rookie and is expected to start at center. And obviously that's a lot of pressure for rookie. It's such a position on the offensive line, especially that so many eyeballs are on. How have you seen him handle that? Yeah, I mean, it's tough for a rookie, especially a first rounder, to come in here and like know you're going to be a starter. And you know, our, you know, I thought Bradley was a great center last year for us. So for him to come in here and you know he got injured in camp, so he didn't get like all the reps mm-hmm. getting ready for week one. So for him to come back from his injury and, and hurry up and get you know on pace with the offense, I think he's been doing a great job. I feel like you don't really like hear any problems of the center, no bad snaps, he's not missing blocks, he's not giving up sacks, so like you just gotta keep going and just keep, you know, rolling with the punches at this point. Absolutely. 
So this one is from Corey Copeland on YouTube. Pat, who's the player you really enjoyed pancaking, and who's the player you want to pancake? Oh, you're getting me, getting me in trouble here. <laughs> um, I'm not going to say a player. I just think that, like, the bigger the guy, if okay. I'm able to pancake a big defender, I think that's the most satisfying thing. So, like, Judon's pretty big, so, like, that was a pretty satisfying <laughs> block. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to say names. We don't want any bulletin board material no. here, especially as we get into the AFC North matchups, which, speaking of, we have the Bengals coming in to the bank Sunday night. This is kind of the first, what well, is the first AFC North matchup this season. What are these games mean, especially hosting them at our place on the primetime game? Um, I mean, it, it means a lot because, one, it's a divisional game. So, if you win your division, you're going to the playoffs. And on top of it, you know, last year we lost both games against them. So, it's like another opportunity to play a team that went to the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. On top of that, it's a primetime game in Baltimore. And we haven't won the last five home games. So, it's like all that combined, it's like just like a big, like, mesh, a big storm of, like, this is our opportunity to, you know, really take care of business and just make the most of it and have fun. Right. And you were on that 2019 team that started 2-2 two and two and then turned it around, didn't lose another game that season. What does it take for this team to kind of make that switch and turn, turn right the course, per yeah. se? Yeah. Um, I think it's just, like, making sure you're executing every play, not worrying about the last play, finishing the game, playing your first play like, the, like it's the last play of the game. Um, and on top of it, it's just week by week, you have to make, it's like a race to get better. Every team's trying to get better every week. If you're not getting better every week, then other teams are, and you're going to start losing games. And I think the biggest thing is just being healthy. Mm. You know, when we're having success here, it's because we're healthy and we're all playing. And I think those are the biggest things, getting better every week and staying healthy. And it looks like we're starting to make it that way, which is great. So speaking of games, this one is from Amanda Miller on Facebook. She wants to know, if you have a pre-game ritual or a certain playlist you listen to every game? I'm, I'm kind of boring on game day, <laughs> honestly. Like, I just have my same routine of, like, you know, getting there at a certain time, having my same order of, like, go in the hot tub, get an IV to make sure I'm hydrated, and then it's, like, see chiropractor, do little things, and then it's nothing crazy, no playlist. Some guys are crazy. Like, you know, I always tell people, Justin Tucker, it's, like, the first day of school for him. Like, he straight up has this... <laughs> His helmet, his pads, his his socks, his cleats, like all lined up, like a body laying on the ground, like it's the first day of school, like he used to do in like mm -hmm. second grade. So I don't do any of that stuff. Um, I just kind of get in there, you know, just get ready and just kind of like get my mind right and just get ready for the game. So actually, we have a good follow up question here from Shane Fuller on Facebook. Do you have a certain pre or post game meal? Um, so in the past. I always used to kind of like treat myself with like some type of fast food, but I've been trying to stay away from that. It used to be Taco Bell. Post game? Post game. Okay, not pre. Be yet. No, not pre. No, <laughs> there's no way. <laughs> I'm not Judah, you know, by, by Taco Bell. Um, but I used to do that because where I used to live, it was like the only thing that was open, mm. even regardless of one time we got there. So I always knew it was open after any game, but I'm trying to stay away from that now. Sarah Snyder would love that answer. Yeah, yeah something a little healthier, maybe. Yeah. This one is from Antoine Brown on Facebook. Who? What's the hardest hit you took, and from who? Uh, hardest hit. See, I don't. I'm a big guy, so I feel like I don't get hit that hard. Um, I don't know. I'd have to think about that one. I mean, this last game, I did get kind of pile drive on the goal line at the end of the game. So that one, uh, <laughs> that one hurt. It never happens to me, so I guess I'll say that one for right now. Okay. How This is a little more fun of one. Manuel on YouTube wants to know your favorite victory pancake. So we're going to take that as the food. Best toppings. Yeah. Um, hmm. I really like chocolate chip pancakes and, like, banana and blueberries. And then, mm. you know, put some whipped cream on top and then obviously syrup. Um, that would be a good post-game meal yeah. after a victory. Yeah. You know, Eric Weddle used to do the post-game ice cream after wins. You could do post-game victory pancakes. pancakes. That's not a bad idea. We might have something coming here. Yeah, yeah. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Just make you eat pancakes, yeah, everyone. Right. <laughs> so hopefully you're eating lots of pancakes this season. This one is from B Vice on Facebook. What's your favorite play that you're ever a part of? I know there's lots Just of like overall ones. play? Yeah, sure. Um... I don't know. I think, I feel like any play that I block and pancake someone or just like physically dominate someone, that's my favorite play. 
like getting the ball is cool and you know different things like that but I think a really good block and our offense scoring I think that's that's the best play to be a part of there's not a specific play that I'm like yes I can't wait for this to be called <laughs> you know it's, it's not like that is it so is it more satisfying for you to have a good block than have like a great reception I think so, but if I have like a one-handed like crazy catch and like I break a couple of tackles, that might be a little bit better. TikTok will love it. Yeah, right. <laughs> but uh, I think I think it's the blocking that's more so. Awesome. All right, let's see what else we got here. This is from John Feria on Facebook. How do you prepare before game day? Um, I always make sure that we get like the whole play sheet of our whole offense of every single call that's going to be called in the game and I go through the whole thing wow. on Saturday night and all day Saturday um, and I just like make sure that I can like read the play and I know exactly where I'm going I know exactly what I'm doing so then when Lamar calls in the huddle I can just I can just go and execute um, besides that I mean just fueling my body the right way making sure I'm hydrated make sure I'm just like getting any kinks out of my body with like treatments or like light massages stretch stuff like that but um, I think the play call is the biggest thing. Yeah, that makes sense. Is there, like, when you look at the schedule, obviously I know New England was a special one for you, but kind of looking at the second half of the season, is there an opponent or a trip you're most excited for? So kind of cliche, I, I don't really know who we're playing for our schedule half the time. Like, I don't really look. I might see a game or two. I think the two games that definitely caught my eyes, just because I'm from Massachusetts, <laughs> don't kill any guys. It's obviously the Patriots game, and then going to Tampa is going to be cool because – I've never played there, and it's really cool to play against Tom Brady, and mm -hmm. um, I think that's the game I'm looking forward to. Yeah, we get that. And, like, obviously beating Tom Brady is always fun, yeah. too. It's a little right. extra special. We'll take a few more fan questions here for you. This one is from Alex on YouTube. He wants to know what your welcome to the NFL moment was. Um, so I think it was actually my first day here, rookie year, <laughs> OTAs. I'm about to walk into the locker room, and as I'm walking in, Somebody walks by me, and I, I got there super early. I was on my draft a rookie, so like I'm trying to like do everything <laughs> to you know get a name for myself, get really there early. Danny Woodhead walks by me, and from Massachusetts again, guys. I love the Patriots, so like he was a big player there, mm -hmm. and I didn't really realize he was on this team because I didn't really. I was just trying to just get get to the facility. I didn't even know who was on the Ravens at that point, um, and just like seeing him, and I was just like like wow, like this. Kind of, this is kind of crazy. Like I'm actually here with these guys, and I think that was like the real first, like, oh, like this is it, you know? That's awesome. That's really cool. I when I came here, I remember like I just missed Steve Smith, and I grew up a Panthers fan, so like seeing Steve Smith around was always cool for me. Yeah. It's like pinch yourself a little bit. Right. Yeah. All right. So we're heading to the bank Sunday night. We've got the Bengals coming to town. Any message you want to share with the fans here before we sign off? Um, Ravens Lock, uh, we need you. You got to pack the bank this Sunday, 820. It's a rivalry game. Uh, Bengals, division. Um, we just we, we need the energy because we need to get this dub. It's a big game and excited for all you guys to be there. You know, I know the house is going to be jumping, so can't wait. We got Nelly coming. Where else I, would you rather be? That's crazy. <laughs> Nelly in the house, man. Absolutely. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We will see you on Sunday.